what happens when all the ice melts in Antarctica. The ice sheet that covers Antarctica is about 1.2 miles thick. It's about 90% of the Earth's fresh water frozen over that enormous landmass that is still one of the most mysterious places on the planet and very fascinating out there. But with these global temperatures rising at an unprecedented pace, whether or not it's swamp gas from Uranus, whether or not it's from the actual chemtrails, a combination of human error, etc., industries, or maybe it's just the sun and its natural cycle and the stars and their natural cycles, maybe there is a brown dwarf star that is causing some of the heating sensations that we are seeing here on our planet as well as others in the cosmos because according to much data, other planets in our solar system are heating up as well. I just shared with you recently how they discovered a brown dwarf, approximately 60 astronomical units from the sun, which is a long way away, but it's a lot closer than what most people would expect. Now, how much will they be able to prevent this ice from melting with these stratospheric aerosol injections that are blanketing the planet that's been talked about various forms? I mean, it's, the information is readily available. It's an absolute fact. They do it in virtually every, on virtually every nation, over virtually every nation, I should say. Just about every state that I've been to, every state that I've been to, I've seen chemtrails. And I've been to almost every state in the nation. Just got back from Florida. The skies were chemtrail. They were blocking the sun the whole way back. And they're, preve- they're doing their best to keep the earth as cool as possible. But even the chemtrails aren't going to prevent this ice from melting. Now, Florida could be virtually completely submerged. Much of the coast, Delaware, um, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Louisiana, about a third of the population, the world's population is within a 60 mile radius of the coast. How many people would have to move if global sea levels rise by 200 feet? Now, I'm going to share with you this real quick. Take a look at this. We just look at it. About 1.2 miles thick. Ice covering Antarctica. Literally 90% of the Earth's fresh water housed over the mysterious continent. Now, this podcast is brought to you by Noble Gold Investments. I just ordered some three ounce, I'm sorry, five ounce rounds from Noble Gold Investments. They're these limited edition five ounce silver rounds. Silver is at an extremely sharp price right now. And in my opinion, I am seeing a lot of similarities to 2008 when the market corrected. The stock market took a huge dump. People lost tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Some people lost millions in their 401k in their 401k and their IRA. So Noble Gold Investments can actually convert many people's IRAs into precious metals. So I enjoy having tangible silver and gold in my hands, in my pockets. It just feels good. And gold and silver have been around since money has been around. So take a look. Also, Noble Gold Investments is offering a free book right now for Leak Project listeners that you will be able to download that will show you how to hedge against inflation, how Big Brother uses inflation against you. It's a great book. It's free. Just click the link. And check out Noble Gold Investments. Okay, that is my shameless plug. Now let's go back to the image here real quick. To prove, I think there's there's plenty of evidence that shows that global sea levels have risen substantially. And the Yonaguni Monument, south of Taiwan, off the coast of Japan, this is an incredible formation of structures that could be 10, 20, 30,000 years old or older. And they're even attempting, some people are still attempting to say that this is a natural phenomenon. Yeah, just look at that. Yep, that's got to be completely natural. It looks like this thing was built by giants. And it was featured on the History Channel, Ancient Aliens. I don't think aliens built this. I think our ancestors built this tens of thousands of years ago. Now, I've shared with you information that there's a good possibility Machu Picchu, before the most recent cataclysm 
that took out the majority of the population and killed off almost the entire planet's life source. Life sources, I mean, multiple extinction-level extinction events. That raised, it was a seaport, and now it's about 12,000 feet in elevation. That supposedly happened in one day. Now, if there's an internal explosion that causes the plates to shift, massive tsunamis, tidal waves, extreme winds, this could also explain some of the flash, flash frozen woolly mammoths and mammals that have been discovered flash frozen, still eating. Just boom, instantly. I mean, take a look at some of these pictures here. Can you imagine what this civilization was like 20,000, 30,000, 10,000 years ago? Look at the size of the stairs, for goodness sakes. I mean, how tall were these things? 20 feet? 30 feet? <laughs> 10 feet? I don't know, maybe they're just average height, but those are some massive blocks. Look at them in comparison to the divers, the size of those boulders. This is called Turtle Cove, the Turtle Dove structure. Look at these guys. The thing is huge. Yeah, I had to learn how to pronounce it properly because I get such a hard time. I still am probably not pronouncing it properly, although I am pronouncing it the way that that website said to. <laughs> Yonaguni, off the coast of Japan. Let me share this with you real quick. Oh, here we go, right here. So, the Yonaguni, Yonaguni Monument. Submarine ruins, the southernmost part of the Ryukyu Islands in Japan. It's approximately 60 miles east of Taiwan. Here's another image here. So I don't think that if the glaciers, if everything melts in Antarctica, you know, if the ice sheets completely melt, because of the volcanoes underneath. I mean, they said recently that 91 volcanoes are underneath the ice sheets of Antarctica. So that's going to cause them to melt, I'm sure, if they start erupting. And also, the weather increasing is going to cause the temperatures to increase on the oceans as well. It goes hand in hand. So that's what these stratospheric aerosol injections for. That's why they are blasting the skies and blocking the sun, is they're doing their best to keep the planet as cool as possible. Yet, there's still giant boats, carrier boats, that emit as much pollution as half the cars on the planet. One boat. You should look this up. It's a carrier boat from China, I think. And that one boat. So, if they really want to do something about it, why don't they start releasing these patents on how to clean up the environment, how to clean up the oceans, how to clean up the ozone, how to harness Tesla-type energies, how about vehicles that are running on air-powered engines like the ones that were shown in India 15 years ago? These little rotary engines running off of compressed air. It's because they want a population control agenda. They want to see the powers that be, those that have access to these, the keys to the kingdoms, they want a population reduction by about 95%. And then they can bring in these new robotic androids that will not question their authority, that will be as reliable, as dependable, and as faithful as they want them to be. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New World Order. So, if the glaciers melt that are already on the, the seas, in the ocean, that's not going to cause the sea levels to rise. I, I'm tired of hearing people saying, well, you know, take a glass of water and put ice in it. If the ice melts, the, the water still doesn't overflow. I get it. So, you take the ice that's already on land, though, so it's not affecting the sea levels, and if that ice melts, that 90% of the Earth's fresh water melts into the oceans, that will cause the sea levels to rise, and I just shared with you some solid evidence for that of a beautiful civilization, the, the ancient civilization, 
that is now under the seas off the coast of Japan. Isn't it amazing, ladies and gentlemen, how much they love us? Even these stratospheric aerosol injections are just Band-Aids. They're just throwing Band-Aids out there. And now they've openly admitted that once they stop spraying the skies, that the Earth is going to have to adjust and make up and compensate for the past. So if, it, if they do it for 50 years, the next five years will have to make up for the 50. It'll be extremely intense. So get ready. It's like, well, we're just going to keep spraying forever now. Reminds me of the movie Highlander 2 where they destroy the ozone, so they have to recreate the ozone, make a fake ozone, the weather sucks, and then the ozone rebuilds itself, but the people that rebuilt that ozone layer didn't want it to be released because they control it and they wanted to keep the control. Isn't it amazing how reality mimics art and art mimics reality? We are probably in some galactic show for some very powerful beings right now, just like you, me, and others that watch tell eye vision, that watch something on the big screen or at home, whatever. You're watching a play. You're a part of that because your mind is being stimulated like it's in it. Same thing goes for probably these galactic players that are using you, me, and others for certain parts in their play. There's too many synchronicities. There's, there's too many number patterns. There are too many correlations that I have seen in my life to make me that would make that makes me feel that we are absolutely in some type of play where it's like remember those old books where everything was written out but you had multiple choices so you would get to the end of the chapter or you would get to a certain part of the chapter and say okay you can go through the left door and the left door is is a nice still door that looks clean and modern. And the only thing on that still door is the, the door knob that has like some weird engraving in it. And you can't really tell what it is. It looks like an ancient sigil or something. And then the door in the center there is a black door that's all, that's like rusted up and, and it's got cobwebs and you, know, you just got this, this real weird vibe to it, really dark and dense and cold. And then the door to the right it's like, a, it's like a double opening door. And you don't really know what to make of it. Because one side's black, one side's white. And it's like a, like a bipolar door. So you're like, hmm, which door do I choose? And you have to choose wisely. Because, you know, that door that looks all nice and clean, that might be the door to your darkness. And the one that looks all scary, that might be the right door. You have to use your intuition. You still can decide where you want to go. It's just that much of the script has already been written out. Now, if you want to be like Neo and go all Neo style, that's when you start to learn how to use your mind over the matter. And then you can start to rewrite these matrix codes and these matrix keys. The more you learn, the more you adapt, the more you understand, the more you become aware, the more you practice your third eye opportunities, your mind, your higher self, then the more you have control over your, over your part you play in the matrix. Now, once again, I'm just a conspiracy theorist, and as you can see, I'm back in Grandma's garage. Uh, there is plenty of evidence, though, to show that sea levels have risen in the past. And with the way that we're seeing these crazy weather patterns right now and all these stratospheric aerosol injections, I would say that we are at the nexus point for a very quick cataclysm cataclysmic situation, a, a network of cataclysms, a systematic events that could unfold just boom, 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 boom. So be prepared, be excellent to each other, do the best you can do every day, and be the change you want to see.